relatively difficult for a lot of dogs to be able to retrieve it. Easy now, easy now. <laughs> All right, guys, so we are ready for Legend's next session, and this is gonna be the next step for you. Let's get him up on the table. Nice job. Now, as you saw in the last video, we were doing some hold work. We worked up to some fairly challenging things, including the brush. No, 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 no. Uh, and what, I want you to think about as you're going through these videos as not individual days of training, but individual steps that you need to be able to accomplish what we show in that step before you're ready for the next one. If your dog's doing well, you may be able to get through multiple steps in a very short amount of time. If your dog is struggling maybe a little bit more, it could take just a few days longer to, and a few shorter sessions, you know, try and keep that um, not as mentally taxing for them. So. The goal of today's is going to be a little refresher with the hold work, and then we're gonna start the next major step, which is gonna be holding and walking. And this one can be drastically more challenging than you might think. It's also part of why, which I've mentioned, movement is gonna be really important. This is part of why um, a dog that's extremely comfortable moving up and down the table, come on, buddy, good. It's gonna be easier for them to walk, um, but you know, it's like uh, you've probably heard the term uh, he can't chew gum and, and walk at the same time. Well, this is gonna be a very similar thing for a lot of dogs. I don't know exactly how Ledge is gonna do with this, but when we start this walking process, we're gonna take it in baby steps. The smaller steps you're taking in dog training, the faster you are gonna get there. Let's get this out of the way. We're not ready for that. All right, so as I mentioned, we wanna find something that your dog is going to, to work very easily for. Hold. Good, that's easy. Let's grab, he said, I want that, please give it back. All right, let's grab another one here. Hold, hold. Good, so we're working through, this is that little refresher you wanna start every session with. Let's hold, we're moving up pretty quick. Ah, this little head cock, like, oh, it's too heavy. Let me let it fall out of my mouth. Make a little correction with that. Keep their head straight up and down, good. And then we're gonna to go to these that were a little more challenging for him. Every dog's gonna be different. Some dogs are gonna love, uh, these are DT system soft mouth trainers. Some dogs are gonna struggle a little bit more with it. Good. Uh, uh, uh. Wanna make sure they're not anticipating. When I go to reach for this, he's not giving it to me. Good. When I take it out of his mouth, that's when, it's, that's when we're all done. Now let's grab, I don't know if we made it to this really big one or not. I think we stopped at the brush. Hold. Good. He said, that's easy. All right, let's go with this uh, docking thing here. Hold. Hold. Good, You're making this look easy. Um, these, I wanna talk about a little bit. It's a lot of people have these and a lot of people are using these and have talked to us or asked us questions about them. This mallard is fairly big and it's a fairly firm foam. So it's actually relatively difficult for a lot of dogs to be able to retrieve it. Easy now, easy now. So it can be relatively difficult. So either go with a smaller sized one, especially in the early stages, or understand that sometimes, is it over here? Yeah. So we've got a quail sized one, um, more appropriate for a, a quail dog, right? No, it's just smaller versus larger. These are really firm, so it, um, it can be a good thing to help a lot of chewing, but at the same time, dogs have to basically vice grip this bad boy, especially coming out of the water. They've gotta have a really firm grip, and I've actually seen, like, there's a lot of punctures in this. It's the only way they can truly get a hold of it. So they're not 100% the easiest thing for your dog to retrieve. Just keep that in mind if you are using one. All right, so. Now, we are going to move to the next step. He worked through a lot of different objects here. He showed I could take a step back. He's doing a great job holding. This was one that he did a really good job with. This is the fire hose type of bumper. We're going to get a hold here. Just as a little reminder, good. And then we're going to unclip him. And we're gonna take this in very, very, very small steps. Hold, 
hold. We're going to help. Come on. Come on. And stop. Good. I don't want you running. I want you just taking one step at a time. Hold. There's a couple steps. He seems pretty comfortable. He's ready to just go. If your dog's ready to just go, slow them down a little bit. It's important that we understand um, that, that they have an understanding of what we're asking here. Hold. Just leading. Come on, come on. Good. Now, turning around is very difficult. That's another challenge. That turning around at one end of the table with something in their mouth is going to be difficult. So we're going to come back down here and start again. Now, some dogs are going to have preferences to only wanting to move this way or only wanting to move that way. Play off that a little bit and then work through it. When we start these guys, we try and make it as simple as possible. Think about each new thing as being 100% different for them and it has to be learned. Even including coming back down the table this way with something in his mouth. So hold, we're gonna take just a couple steps. Good, hold. He's doing a really nice job with this. Um, it's because I, I, he went to set that down there and I caught him still as a conditioning process at this point, being able to say, I want you to keep this in your mouth and I wanna show you that it isn't ever gonna come out of your mouth. If at all possible, we can just keep it in their mouth and help to show them holding is what we're looking for, good. Now, let's go ahead and try this. Again, I am helping him with that turn. I'm not asking him to do it yet with something in his mouth. Come back this way. We want more table, Bubba. Good, so hold and then walk with me. Come on. Good. Catching, helping to maintain that conditioning of hold. Good. All right, he's doing really, really well with this. I'm gonna try a loop and see if I shoot myself in the foot, pushing a little bit too much here, but I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna do it. Hold, we're gonna come down this way. Again, I'm right with him. Good, now let's turn around. Nice job, and that's all we're gonna ask for there. He made the turn, good boy. Hold. Uh, 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 uh. Again, that looked like, and when I had his, hand, his mouth in my hand there, it felt like he had started to relax. Good, like he was about ready to give it up, so, or set it down, but this would be, stop that, stop. This would be kind of the end of this step. He's holding, he's holding and walking. We're going to incorporate a couple different items into this, but that's ultimately not all the, let's get this out of the way. It's ultimately not the end of the world um, or 100% necessary. If he can walk up and down the table with one object, he's gonna be able to do it with multiple objects that he knows how to hold. We will start his next session with a little bit of holding and walking again as that refresher and then move right into fetch work. Guys, hey, hey, this is your part. This is Legend, I'm the guy with the pink gun, and we will see you in his next video. Mm -hmm.